Hey, this is Jacob Peck, and today we're talking about The Walking Chord Blues by Ted Green. Now this particular blues study is a little more complicated. Uh, it's, there's a chord on every beat. Forces us to jump around all over the neck, really. But it's one of those studies where one single bar can reveal to you so much. If you tackle the whole piece and make it happen, yes. But even if you just tackle one bar of this and get it, good, good. So let's look at bar one, right? So right out the bat, we got bar one. And let's look at that. I mean, we got an E9, our typical E9 shape, but with the open E. Now this is an inversion to get familiar with. This is a essentially a 13 chord in an inversion. You have the flat 7, the 3rd, the 6, and the 1. Right? And then here comes this E7 sharp 9 with the 5th in the bass. You got 5, 3, 7, sharp 9. And then to a B flat 7 sharp 11, taking us into the four chord in A9. So at a tempo you've got into the A9. Now here's another very important relationship to notice. This is an A9. What else is it? Well, that's a C sharp minor 7 flat 5 shape, right? So a little something. Minor 7 flat 5s can be built off the third of any dominant chord to get you a 9 chord. Okay, so we got our A9, another A9, and into good old, what is Ted's calling here, E diminished seven, right? Then doing your, your little minor third trick, right? We could go if we wanted, or if we wanted, right? Because diminished is symmetrical, lovely. So bars one and two at speed. Half step below into the A9, A9, E diminished, E diminished. Now here's a fun run, right? We're going E, cycle of fours, E, A, D, G. Now I always like to arpeggiate it. If we're being pretty strict with the music, we just have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That's beautiful. I, I like to throw in a little. walking, you know, but to each their own, right? So notice here we've got a cycle of fours coming from the E. We've got our E, fourth way to A, seven, fourth way to D11, fourth way to G6, right? E, A, D, G. Think about, think about, you know, the root motion, E, you know, rather E, A, D, G. but we've got some inversions here. Third in the bass, root in the bass, root in the bass here. Just this E has the inversion, the third in the bass there. Now dig this, F sharp seven, sharp five, to B11. It's sort of like a two five to E. Cool E seven shape here. Into this B seven, or pardon me, B flat nine. Sharp 11. Once again, I like to sort of arpeggiate in here. Bass. All right, something like that. Now here it comes. We're only in four bars in, right? If you've, if you've dealt with all these chords, you're doing great already. Just these four bars. Because these are all a lot of movement here. A lot of inversions one may not be familiar with. step above. Now check out this A9 chord. You've got the open A string and then right seven nine three seven. That's flat seven. Inversion of A7, A7 root position, and then the third in the root. Right at speed. And, and notice this little rhythmic game Ted gives us a one. It's A, 
Oh, one, two, and three, four. Into the next bar, you get this cool A11. Open A, C sharp here, D here, flat seven here. And jumping all the way down to this A minor seven. Right, with this flat seven in the bass, you got the flat seven, the fifth, and the minor third. There is, the A isn't even in there, it's an implied A minor seven. Into A minor six, and then flat three and A minor, rather C and A. So this is bar five and six at speed. You've got very fun, and I love the rhythmic, the rhythmic game Ted gives us. This. It's fun. Moving on to bar seven and eight. This gets a little tricky, a little bit of a dance here, right? We're going from an E, A6, inversion of A7, E6 yet again, inversion of E7, A7, E6 again, this B flat, or a thinking a half step above to B, relative, or not relative, but com companion minor of the B7, back to B7, B flat 7, in half step yet above the A7, to its companion minor, E, and a big leap, inversion of E, half step above, Five. Now in bar seven and eight, you get this lovely melody on top. This All right, and it carries on. You put that at speed; it's really groovy. Playing with it. Right, you swing the thing. Now we get to bar nine and ten. F sharp minor seven. More melody, right? B seven. All these half step above. A seven. Look at this inversion of A seven. What do you got? You got three flat seven, root fifth, a lovely shape. And this is something Ted does, is he brings these groovy inversions onto the lower strings in the middle of the neck. And you get these really thick, these meaty sounds, right? If we were to put this inversion on the next set of strings, notice it's thinner, right? That's the thinness of the B string coming through. The meat of the G is on this one. And since I got a seven string guitar, I can go up here and go. It's almost too meaty. Sounds like a cello to me. Bass sounds like a bass, right? So I can get way up here on the seven string. Good shape to have. Okay. Where were we here? Dig this E minor seven. So this is flat seven in the bass to A7 with the third in the bass. We voice lead here, boom, boom, to A7 root in the bass to E. He's calling it an E7, even though there's no flat seven in here. But so, such is life. Implication of harmony. Let's put, let's listen to bar nine and 10 again with B flat, A, E minor, A7, A7, E. Big leap to this inversion of E, third in the bass. And I love this, this is crazy. He goes, he's wanting you to keep your pinky down there to keep that melody alive, that while you get down to that, right? That's a dance. 
How about, oh, I can turn that into an exercise. Anyway, down to this A7. Now how cool is this voicing, right? You've got the third in the bottom, the A here, and then the flat seven up here. Right? And yet again, Ted is avoiding that B string there and choosing the thicker sound of the G, which I, I dig, right? And that also allows you to maybe get the something on top, right? Got the root on top, could even keep going, get the nine on top. All of a sudden it sounds like a harp or a koto or something. But anyway, Ted's got this one for us. Into an inversion of an E7. Important shape here, guys. Having, knowing this flat seven tritone of the major third, right? Flat seven tritone. Getting that in your system there. Sounds like that, right? Nearing the end of the piece here, we drop down to a C9. And yet again, another half step leading into a five. Five again, five chord, that is. And you're back home. Hence the importance of knowing your inversions and knowing you can build, say, a minor seven flat five chord off the third of a dominant. And, you know, cycles of four here. D. G, I just like to walk it, F sharp to B, E flat seven there, half step above, A, right? I'm sort of playing with the rhythm here. A11 to minor, gotta dig it. Now here comes the moves. Just, you know, how do you play E and A? E and A, E, B6, oops, right, E, B6, B7, pardon me, F sharp minor. Doesn't really matter. Just gotta try every bar, guys. Do every bar. Give every bar some serious attention. All right, and deal with it one thing at a time, right? You gotta think, you know, there's a lot going on here. There's, so, for instance, you can do one round where you're just gonna think about, can I get my fingers to even listen to me? Right? Just get your fingers to find these shapes, get the sound. Notice I'm sort of slowing it down a touch here. All right. Just to get, you know, give myself a little more time with every chord. And I always like to do something on this, this particular bar. All right? And on one, yeah, as I said, one round, just focus on the motor skills, right? Can my fingers obey me? I hope so, right? This part's tricky. But how groovy, right? This part's ridiculous. Lovely, right? Then on another round, analyze the chords, right? Three, seven, nine, five, right? Seven. Or, yeah, seven, flat, flat seven, three, six, one, five, three, seven, sharp nine, right? One, seven, three, sharp eleven, right? Go, go through it and deal with the situation cognitively. Map your chord, know your intervals, and goodness gracious, on the next pass, spell the chord. Then you're a real champion. G sharp, D, F sharp, B, right? D, F sharp, C sharp, E, B, oh my goodness, B, G sharp, D, G, right? Go through and spell things. Uh, you may not be acquainted to doing that, but uh, honest, to, honest to goodness gracious, it helps with the motor skills. If you work on your naming skills and then work just on the motor skills, it's like a link happens in the brain that wouldn't happen otherwise. So do both, right? Do, you can do some intellectual weightlifting by naming what you're doing. We don't need to become infatuated with the names, but we should develop that particular muscle um, in addition to just our ears and 
course, our fingers. I'll play through it a few more times, see if we've got anything else to say. Thank you. 